How's it going? My name is Brent from Encore and today I'd like to go over with you all the products that we use during our installs. There will also be a link in the description below for all of these products. So starting over here, we have the tools that we use to remove and reinstall badging. To remove the badging, we use this tool here. And then to remove the adhesive after the badge is taken off, we use this eraser wheel. If there's any adhesive left after that, we're going to use some 3M adhesive remover to take that off. As far as reinstalling badging goes, we're going to be using a double-sided 3M tape. If the 3M double-sided tape is too thick, we're going to be using a banner tape. And with this one, we're going to be using any, anywhere from one to three layers of it. This here is a tool that we use to reinstall the emblems on Teslas on the hood. And it's just a great tool to get them lined up perfectly each time. Okay, so right here we have all the products that we use to prep the vehicle for the install. We also have a spotless wash station, which I will put a link in the description for, for a video that's just out, that goes over that. Right here we have a 70% rubbing alcohol. We use this along with a yellow microfiber towel. And we use that on all of the edges of the vehicle, everywhere that we're going to be wrapping. We make sure and wipe down with this. We also use a clay bar to remove contaminants from the paint. And then right before we set the paint protection film on the car, we're going to be using a one pass water blade. And so we'll just spray the vehicle down and then use this to, to squeegee it off. So all of these products right here are going to be used to mix the solutions that we use during our installs. First off, we're going to start with water that's been run through a reverse osmosis system. And then we store it in these one gallon jugs. And the reason that we store it in the one gallon jugs is so that we get our mixtures perfect. During our installs, we will be using three different solutions. Two of them will be mixed up in these bottles, which are just pump sprayers. And then the last one, which will be our slip solution, is mixed up in a corning keg. So as far as the tack solution goes, we're going to start with 70% rubbing alcohol and then dilute that down to 20% rubbing alcohol to 80% water. So as far as our slip solution goes, we use this soap here poured into a measuring cup that has a lid on it. And the ratio on this is going to be seven milliliters to one gallon of water. The last solution that we use is going to be just straight water or hot water and that'll be in one of these pump sprayers as well. Okay, so these last three products that we use during our installs are going to be first a chair with the back and armrests removed. A great upgrade is replacing the wheels with these roller blade type wheels. We use just a ton of lighting with these lights here. And then this is our corning keg that we mix our slip solution into. Now this corning keg has about 30 feet of hose. We use this plastic sprayer as well as a, we have a filter on this. These filters here, take a look in the description below because you're going to find that if you go to buy these filters, they're somewhere around between 30 and 40, maybe even $50 a piece. And we have a website that we buy them from directly from a manufacturer and I think that they're only about $10. So take a look at that. That's a big savings. So another tool that we will be using during all of our installs is going to be a heat gun. So as far as the tools that I carry in my pouch with me, I'm always going to have a microfiber towel with me. Two different size squeegees. This is a two inch and this one here is a four inch. This two inch one here is quite a bit firmer than my orange one. If anybody knows where to get these orange ones, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave me a comment below on where to purchase these. I got this one at a SEMA show. It was being passed out by UPPF and I have not been able to find these ones since. 
I keep a little wrapping tool inside my pouch as well. And this is great for tucking the film into areas that I can't reach my fingers into. In my pouch, I also carry two different Bondo cards. One is going to have a little bit of a bend to it like this, which works really well for working in contoured areas. The other one is for wrapping vehicles, and I find that this edge does help soak up a little bit of water and or moisture when you're wrapping and tucking into areas on the vehicle. I'm also going to have a wrap glove inside of my pouch. I'm also going to have a blade dispenser inside of my pouch. This is for holding the blades that you snap off your, on your open knife. I carry two bone sticks with me and the bone sticks are going to be used for a couple different purposes. One is going to be used for taking things apart and this one can get a bit more scratched up than the other one. This one I keep the edges incredibly smooth on and this one's going to be used when I'm putting the material together in seam, on seams where I can heat it up and then use the bone stick to help bond and bring together that seam. Also, this will be used if I happen to leave a little piece of contamination underneath the material and I can put some heat on that and then massage that part to get some of the silvering out around that piece of contamination. The last thing that I use this for is going to be to get rid of silvering. So on like let's say a black vehicle where you're stretching the material and you leave a little bit of silvering, very minor, you can heat that up and massage it out with this as well. I definitely have an Ulfa blade in my pouch at all times. I also carry a pencil in my pouch and the pencil is going to be used for whenever I'm making a copy of a pattern or a piece of PPF that is already on the vehicle and I need an exact duplicate of it for another side. This is mostly something that we use when we're getting a vehicle from a body shop and I need to match a, something that's already on the car. So the last thing that's in my pouch with me is a cigar holder. And inside this cigar holder is going to be a syringe. If I do happen to leave any water behind underneath the material or there's an air pocket, I can use this syringe to remove that. The cigar holder is a great place to leave that so you don't have to worry about the cap coming off of the end of the syringe and then getting stabbed with it when you reach in your pouch or if it pokes through the pouch. All right, well, I appreciate you taking a look at this video. If you found anything helpful, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.